Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, welcome to St. Swithin's. We're going to get going in about two and a half minutes. Um, so the cafe is now uh, closed. It'll be open after the service. Uh, so do come and grab a seat, uh, ready for us to get going in just a couple of moments' time. Well, a very warm uh, welcome to you. Uh, good morning. It's great to see you here at St. Swithin's. Welcome as well if you're joining us online. My name's Jim. I'm the vicar here. And my name's Victoria, and I'm one of the curates here. And if this is your first Sunday, you are so welcome with us this morning. You are indeed. And if it is your first time, we'd love to get to know you. Come and see us at the welcome area at the back. Or there's some little QR codes, uh, lovely little QR codes on the back of the seats in front of you, which you could also use to connect as well. Uh, so, as you, I'm sure you're aware, today is Mothering Sunday, and uh, during our service, uh, we are thinking about time with God, uh, spending time with God through prayer. We are indeed. But at the start of the service, uh, like Victoria said, it is uh, Mothering Sunday, and so we just want to take uh, just a moment uh, just to think not only of our, our own mums, uh, our own kind of family relationships, but actually Mothering Sunday is all about the church family uh, as well. So we just wanted to take uh, a moment to acknowledge, to thank, uh, to share our love with all, uh, all the women uh, in our church, all the women uh, we know as well, who make this family, who make this community uh, such a meaningful place to be. So we're just going to watch uh, a little video together produced by Home for Kids.
in a moment that we are going to worship God together. But can I just invite you to stand as we pray? God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth. And on a cross drew us all into family with him. Give us strength to live lives full of the power of your presence, which binds us together and brings healing. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we're going to remain standing as we worship God together, as we thank him uh, that he is uh, our amazing father, our mother, uh, that we have a church family here uh, together. There's going to be actions during the second song as well, so we'd encourage you uh, to join in with those. For the little ones, do come and grab a flag or ribbons if that helps you in your worship as well. But let's worship together.
seat. We're going to continue uh, in our worship and prayer uh, together because we've just sung about how good God is and how God fills us. So if you want to grab uh, a balloon, I think there's a balloon on your seat, just give, uh, blow it up, uh, just a sign to remind us how God fills us with his love, with his peace. Okay, and when you've done that, just hold on to it or burst it. One of the two. <laughs> okay, don't blow them too much. All right. Okay. Wow. Okay, so just um, resist the temptation to make funny noises, all that kind of stuff. Okay, just hold them like that. So if you're able to, I encourage you to hold your balloon out in front of you uh, as we come to God in prayer and intercession. So as we're going to pray, we're going to think about how good... God is, and yet how sometimes the more we sing of God's goodness, the more we realize uh, that we let him down, that we do things that don't uh, kind of mirror that image of God in us. So each time we pray, we're just going to let a little bit of air out uh, and ask for God's forgiveness. So the response uh, will be on the screen. So Lord, we are sorry for the times when we get too busy or distracted and take you for granted and don't spend time with you. If you can just gently let some air out. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we're sorry for the times when we're selfish and ignore the needs of others. Just let a bit more air out. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, we are sorry for the times when we have not loved one another as you have loved us. And have not been family to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And the good news is that God always forgives. God always fills again when we come to him. So we're just going to blow the balloon back up again. And I'm just going to pray. So just hold those balloons out in front of you. Father God, thank you that when we come and say we're sorry, Lord, thank you for those times that uh, when we've not lived as you would, when we let that image of you in us fade, Lord, thank you that as we come and say sorry, that you forgive us. Thank you that you don't leave us as we are, but you fill us and set us on the right path again. Thank you, God, that you are good. Amen. 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 Go and let it all out. You're wonderful. Can I invite you to stand together? Because as we've made peace uh, with one another, so too we, sorry, as we've made peace with God, so too we make peace with one another as well. God not just restores our relationship with him, but brings us into one family, which is what we're thinking about today. So in a moment, we're going to share the peace with one another. While we do that, I'm going to ask all the children and all the young people uh, to come and grab uh, a bunch of flowers. Uh, there's some this side, there's some that side. Grab a bunch, take it back uh, to your mum or your carer or your grandma if she's here today. And then once you've done that, we want to make sure that every single woman uh, in this room uh, gets a bunch of flowers because they're all part of our family together and play an important role. So uh, children, young people, we want to make sure we cover uh, everyone uh, in daffodils. That sounded wrong, but you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. Christ is our peace. He's reconciled us together in one body by his cross. We meet together in his name and we all share together in his peace. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of the peace. Uh, let's get those daffodils handed out. <laughs> give out. I said keep going. Wonderful. Do feel free to take a seat uh, once you've finished sharing the piece. Wonderful. Children, just have a good look around. Make sure everybody has some daffodils.
keep going. There we are. There's a couple more here. Have you got some? There we are. There, 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 there. there. These two. These two. There we go. There is more on this side. Okay. Lady in the back. Wonderful. Uh, if you are a lady and you haven't got flowers, just, just raise your hand. It's not because you're not important. It's just we've, we've missed you. So just stick your hand up if we missed you. Liz, Izzy's coming around with some. Thank you. Wonderful. Amazing. Amazing. Well, this morning we're thinking all about, we're continuing our series, Practicing the Way, uh, ways that we can over Lent, um, practice our faith more, things we can do in our lives to follow Jesus more. And today we're looking all about prayer, and we're thinking about this idea of prayer being like breathing. So we want to know who can hold their breath the longest. We want to know who's best at taking a deep breath. And the way we're going to do that, because uh, it, it, it's quite hard if we just ask you to hold your breath. So what we're going to ask you to do is take a massive breath, and then we want you to say buzz for as long as you can. Okay, so... What we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to do it in the congregation, so sort of where you are, turn to your neighbours, and then what we want is we want a champion from each side who's going to come forward and represent your side. Fantastic. So maybe I encourage you to get into kind of groups as you are sat, so maybe like you guys can be a group, you guys can be a group, you guys can be a group. So you're looking, you're looking for the champions. Okay. We're only interested in champions. So take, okay. a, take a deep breath together, and after three... Buzz, one, two, three. Okay, let's see who lasts the longest. We have a bit of music in the background while we do this, otherwise, there we go. Okay, have a good look at the music. Let's see if these are doing well for the timing. The record for this at church, by the way, is 1 minute 47 seconds, wow. just, to, just to say. Quite a high bar. Okay. Okay, uh, so just between you, have a look around your side. Can you elect? So this side, maybe have a discussion champion. about who is your nominated champion. Elect a yeah. champion. That's right. Okay. Yeah, do come out. Do come out. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, Gail, looks like you. Hope you come. Hope you come. Good boy, yeah. Up you go. Up you go. Fantastic. Wonderful. Wonderful. What's your name? Simon. Okay. Hello. Who have we got here? <laughs> Hiya, I'm Gail. Gail. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> I noticed in prep you, you actually took your glasses off quite meaningfully before you, <laughs> before you strayed up here, so I'm Serious expecting business. big things. Who have we got this side? On my side, we've got Tyron, who's, uh, yeah, who's our champion of champions. Okay. Are you feeling confident, Tyron? Uh, yeah. Just e like. easy, yeah? Chill. Yeah, no problem. Okay, we'll go first. Have you got a stopwatch? Yes. Has someone got a stopwatch? Let me go. Okay. Okay. Jen has. Are you ready right. then, Jen? Are you ready? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Are we going this side first? Cool. Uh, we'll, we'll go this side. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We'll right. set the bar. Okay. Three, two. Are you ready? You ready? <laughs> Good. Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Wow. And the blessing of the Lord God, on, we haven't got enough time now. What did we get? That's all. Felt longer. I mean, that was very good. It just felt longer. 33 seconds. Very good. Very good. Okay, Tari. Um, so, a word of advice. I just fill from your diaphragm and let it out slowly, because Gail's a singer, so she probably knows how to do that. Okay, are you ready, Tari? Okay, deep breath. Oh. Oh. 
An abrupt, abrupt halt. 15 oh. seconds, so give it for Gail. Thank you, Thank you uh, so very much, much uh, indeed for all that. Wonderful. Uh, we're going to have uh, our reading, um, so um, yeah, uh, let me just find a lectern and... Uh, Wonderful. I've got that first slide up, Nick, because I've completely forgotten to bring my sheet up. Wonderful. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Jesus replied, pray like this. stop there. So Jesus continued, which of your fathers, sorry, Jesus continued, I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask for him? Thanks, Nick. I remember uh, at age seven, uh, walking uh, along a balance beam uh, in my school hall, in my, uh, in, in my pants and my vest, because that's what we did in those days. Uh, and I remember getting towards the end of this balance beam and slipping off and landing on my back in a heap on the floor. And then it, it started, or rather it seemed to stop. I couldn't breathe. I was trying, but nothing was happening. I looked up and around in panic to my classmates, to my teacher, to see if they'd notice me. Luckily, she had, and she was walking over to me. By this point, I was panicking. I couldn't breathe. I was going to die. I was sure of it. She just came over with a bit of a wry smile on her face. I was thinking, what are you smiling at? Can't you see I'm about to die here? She came over. She propped me up. She told me to calm down, to breathe, and said, you're fine. You're fine. You've just winded yourself. Maybe you've had a similar thing happen to you. Uh, maybe you've been winded before. You've had the air taken out of you. It's not a nice feeling. And the first time it happens, you can kind of wonder what on earth is going on. And when you're winded, temporarily what happens is your diaphragm stops contracting, stops tightening. And that means breathing feels impossible. But it's only when you get the wind knocked out of you that you suddenly become aware how important breathing is. Sounds obvious, but we don't think about it. It's so natural to us that we breathe. Without the ability to breathe, suddenly we recognize that things don't look quite so good. And quite frankly, fullness of life begins to stop. And eventually, if we don't start breathing again, then obviously we die altogether. We need to breathe to have life. It's fundamental to living. And this morning, as we think about prayer, I think the analogy of breathing, this idea of breathing is helpful. We often speak of having a prayer life, both as individuals, but also as the church. We call it a prayer life because like breathing, prayer is what keeps our relationship with God alive. It's through prayer that we 
are filled with the life-giving breath of his spirit, just like breathing. Uh, verse is going to come up on the slide. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5 that we are to pray without ceasing. We're to pray all the time. We're to pray continually. The message says pray at all times. And what does that mean? Does that mean we walk around with our eyes closed and our hands together and our heads bowed the whole time? Well, of course, it doesn't mean that because apart from anything else, it would be quite dangerous. But just as breathing is essential to our physical lives, so prayer is essential to our spiritual lives. A life without prayer looks really different to a life with prayer. A life without prayer looks really different to a life with prayer. How many breaths do you think we take each day? Any ideas? Five? Ten million? How many breaths each day? Six thousand? Million? Apparently, each day we take about 26,000 breaths. Any ideas how much air we take into our lungs each day? So without 26,000, how many liters of air do you think we take into our lungs each day? 26,500. 20, 20, yeah, 26 liters, 150 liters, any advance on that? We take 14,000 liters of air into our lungs each day. And scientists say that if you're breathing properly, the way you're designed to breathe, then your body should be able to get 90% of its energy from our breathing. But scientists also say because we're so busy, because we're always so distracted or we're always rushing around onto the next thing, that actually, rather than 90% of our lung capacity, we only use about 10 to 20% of that. We could be breathing far more deeply, far more effectively. And so I wonder, it got me wondering to what our prayer lives are like. Might it be that if our prayer lives grew deeper, if we intentionally slowed down and focused a little bit more on prayer and through prayer time with God, that our lives would be even fuller. Maybe our prayer life looks like that, which is great. But if we used more of the capacity that we have, maybe our prayer lives might look a little bit bigger still. Or maybe if we kept on discovering what our prayer lives could look like, that actually we might expand even more than that. You get the idea. Might it be that if our prayer lives grew deeper, we'd experience and be filled more with the presence of God? That not only would we be filled this much, but we might even be filled this much. Just imagine what might be possible. Just imagine what impact that might have on the lives of others around us. If people see that much of God on me as I walk around, it, people might notice it a little bit, a little balloon attached to me. If I'm walking around with this, people will definitely notice. If I'm walking around with this, then people will definitely sit up and take more notice. It's harder to ignore the fuller we are. And you know, I don't know if ever you've been on an aeroplane, but at the, on an aeroplane, when you're about to fly, uh, they come and do the safety briefing, and they tell you about putting oxygen masks on in case of an accident uh, so that you're able to breathe. And I remember the first time I went, pre went on a plane, it struck me as slightly weird that they make a real point of saying, make sure you put your own oxygen mask on first before you help others. In other words, you need to be able to breathe properly and deeply and well if you're then going to help others. And it's the same with our mission out there. There's a world that desperately needs to know God, that needs to know the breath of God filling them. 
And we can go out and we can do all kinds of activities. We can tell people about Jesus. We can invite them to the Alpha Away Day like we had yesterday. We can do Stay Toasty. We can do all kinds of amazing stuff. But the truth is if we've not got oxygen on ourselves, if we're not being fooled with the presence of God ourselves, then actually uh, we're not doing the best kind of that we can do. It's not going to have the biggest impact it can because we're not going to have that impact and effect on people. And that filling, that breath of God comes only through time in prayer. We can't go out and change the world and do the things God calls us to if we're not first full of the breath of the Spirit. Spurgeon, uh, Charles Spurgeon, a famous preacher, he called the church prayer meeting when the church came together. He called it the powerhouse of the church. And he said, if the engine room is out of action, then the whole factory will grind to a halt. Church, the truth is, if we're not as a church making prayer and corporate prayer together a priority, then the whole factory, the whole engine is going to come to a halt. You know, the church prayer meeting isn't an added option, an added extra for those who are super spiritual. It's fundamentally the key part of what we do and who we are as a church. The disciples, as they spent time with Jesus every day, going where he went, seeing what he did, listening to what he said, they only ever asked Jesus to teach them one thing. Imagine all the things they saw Jesus do and say, but there's only one thing out of all that that they ever asked Jesus to teach them. Having seen Jesus in action, the one thing that they saw Jesus do, that they desperately wanted to learn. The one reality that they saw in Jesus' life that they desperately wanted to have for themselves was the closeness to God, of being filled with the Spirit of God. And so they said to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. And so Jesus teaches them to pray. He teaches them in what we now know as the Lord's Prayer. He gives them a pattern of how to pray. And that prayer, there's like things in it that we exhale, things we breathe out. Lord, forgive us our sins. But there's also things that we breathe in. Lord, your kingdom come. Lord, give us today our daily bread. And the Lord's Prayer is a great way of just taking each phrase and then thinking about what it might mean for your life and praying that through each day. But the real punchline comes a few verses later in verse 13, which is going to come up on the slides. Jesus says, how much more will your Father in heaven give, 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 he didn't say that, Uh, he was speaking in Aramaic, Uh, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Jesus is saying, you want to learn to pray well, here, here's a way that you can pray. Here's some words that you can say to help you structure your prayers. This is how you can pray. But if you want to learn to pray, you need to ask for more of the breath of God. You need to ask for more of the Holy Spirit to fill you. Because the Holy Spirit will teach you to pray. Often we just say, uh, teach us to pray, and we look at the Lord's Prayer, but it goes on to this rest of this verse. Ask the Spirit to come and fill you, and He will teach you what to pray. And so, like we have every week, we've just got a slide coming up that maybe just gives you a few ways that you can begin to put this into practice. I know some weeks people have just taken a little screenshot of it and have found that helpful, so do feel free to get your phones out and do that. But depending kind of whether you're new to faith or have no faith, whether you're kind of, you know, doing a right in your faith or whether you're kind of really mature and along in your faith. Here's just some ideas of things that you might do to go kind of from that to maybe this, to be more full of his spirit. We'd love everyone, the whole church, as we go through the rest of Lent into into Easter and Pentecost, maybe set your alarms for midday every day. And when it goes off, we're all going to pray the Lord's Prayer together, wherever we are. It's a way we can collectively pray. We've got Kingdom Come coming up on Monday, Thursday. We're going to be upstairs all being well. Because the first thing we want to do up there is pray. 
And so we'd love you to join us on Monday, Thursday, as we think about all Jesus did, as we pray together, as we ask God's Spirit to come and fill us for the next chapter. And you know that as we pray, we can be filled with the Spirit. But when we come together and pray, when you add your prayers to my prayers, when we all come together, when we all discover what it is to live a life, I don't know who I'm crushing there, when we all come together and ask God for more and more, this is limitless, this could be even bigger, but can you see what a difference and impact of that in our lives and our community would have, as opposed to just a few of those. Can you get a picture of the difference it will make if we can understand, if we can grow more in our life together, in prayer together, asking God to come and fill us, asking God to teach us. Thank you, Anthony. Could you get rid of that, mate? Asking God to fill us with his spirit and teach us to pray. So we're going to stand together and we're going to ask the Spirit to do that just now, to come and teach us to pray. And so I'm going to ask you just to uh, close your eyes, just so you don't get distracted by what's going on around you. You might like to place your hands out. Again, it's an open sign, it's a posture saying, God, we haven't got this sorted and we need your help. It's a sign of saying, God, I don't know how to pray, but would you teach me? And just for a moment, just want you just to think, maybe it's it's the the balloon with no air in, maybe it's the balloon with air in, maybe it's the globe, maybe it's the bigger ball, maybe it's the massive ball. If you're honest with yourself and honest with God, which of those is your sort of prayer life at the moment? There's no shame in this, just God knows anyway. There's no guilt in this. It's not about not being good enough. It's about asking the Spirit to move you on, to grow you into the next thing. So please don't feel any any guilt or anything like that. But which one would you say you are at the moment? I don't know about you, but I want to grow. I want to grow my prayer life. Because I want to know more of the presence of God in my life, in this church, and through that into the city and villages around us. And so we pray, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Spirit, would you teach us to pray? Lord, would you stir up and put in a deeper hunger by your Spirit to, to pray more, not just kind of those moments where we stop and do an activity of praying, but actually, like Paul says, we pray without ceasing. It's like the whole time, just as we're walking around, we're aware of your presence with us. And we're able to talk to you and listen to you. And I pray, Lord, where our prayer lives might have got stuck or feel a bit stale. Lord, Lord, we pray that even this week you'd come and ignite them. You'd come and fan them into flame. And Father, I pray you do that for us as individuals, but also as a whole church. Lord, that as a whole church, you would teach us to pray. That prayer might be the engine room of what you've called us to here. We're just going to wait just a little bit longer. And just the Spirit wants to come and speak to us in different ways, maybe about prayer, maybe about something else as well. But let's just listen. Let's just be open to what the Spirit wants to say and do in each one of us.
may be part of allowing God to teach us how to pray. Perhaps could mean praying prayers that we've never prayed before. And I sense that there might be uh, a couple of people in the room who um, have a desire to pray bold, courageous prayers, maybe for yourself or for um, a family member, somebody that you love. So if you feel that is you, we'd love um, in a bit to uh, gather along the front and just invite the Holy Spirit to fill you afresh, to invite the Holy Spirit to come, to equip you, to pray prayers uh, that you've never prayed before in his name. So the band are going to come up and lead us. Uh, the first song is As We Wait. And so uh, don't feel you need to snap back into kind of being church, you know, being what we do on a Sunday morning, singing just because there's so, like use it to wait on God, use it to pray. And while we sing these next couple of songs, uh, I'm going to ask some of the prayer team. Uh, they're going to kind of gather uh, a little uh, a pair there, uh, a pair down here, uh, a pair at the front. Um, so if the prayer team can begin to move just in pairs um, and come to the front, that would be great. Um, but if during these next two songs you'd love someone just to pray with you, uh, it might be like Victoria says, you've, you just have a heart more for prayer and intercession. And that might not be a new thing, but we'd love to just pray into that and pray that God would bless you in that. That might be children as well. You might just really at the moment be loving praying and feel a real heart to pray and read your Bible and we'd love to pray for you as well or there might be anything else at all that you'd love someone just to pray with you so uh, yeah if the team uh, can, if someone could come down here with Beth and then another couple uh, at the front here but as we begin to sing um, let's just pray uh, and worship together Fill our hearts and minds. 
receiving prayer, do just continue to do that. But we're going to come together to Lord's table and we're going to receive and ask him again for the bread and the wine to meet with us, to fill us, to expand us. And so the Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is always right to give you thanks, God our creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and you filled your world with life. You sent your son to live among us, Jesus our savior. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins and he rose in glory from the dead. And you send your spirit to bring new life to this world and you clothe us with power from on high. And so we join the angels to celebrate and sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took bread and thanked you. He broke it and he gave it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. Do this to remember me. For great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come. And so, Father, as we bring this bread and wine, as we remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Amen. 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 And would you pour your Spirit on us that we may love one another and work for the healing of the earth and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. Amen. For honor and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one another. And so we say together the prayer we've been talking about, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, the prayer that the Spirit helps us to pray. And so let's say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In a moment, I'm going to invite you uh, to come and receive from his table. There'll be a station uh, either side at the front and one either side at the back. If you need gluten-free or non-alcoholic, please do just come to the front uh, and indicate that as well. If you're not quite ready to receive, if you're not quite the place uh, where you know Jesus as your Lord, then we'd, A, we'd love to introduce you, but B, we'd love to still invite you forward. Just leave your hands in front of you and we'd love to pray uh, a prayer of blessing for you. As we receive, we get the band are going to continue to lead us uh, in worship. That, they're not just doing that to perform, um, so we can continue in our worship, waiting on God together. So do join in with the worship. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. Those who are helping uh, administer can come.
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there's peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. just want to speak the name of Jesus. Every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. say the prayer together that comes up on the screens. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We're going to remain standing uh, for our final song together.
And during uh, that song, we're going to take up uh, our giving, our offering. Many of you, I know, give uh, in different ways uh, throughout uh, the week. But this is a real opportunity uh, for those who don't or those who want to give additionally to some of the work we're doing here. We, we, we heard a, a really good story that we've been... Um, uh, we applied for a grant for Stay Toasty, which is uh, something we're running in the West End uh, for kids after school. And um, uh, we were able to put in the grant because we were able to match fund it with giving from here and volunteer hours uh, from here. Uh, and not only have they come back with the, the 1800 I think it was, that we asked for, but they've, they've doubled it um, beyond what we asked for. So, uh, so our giving makes a, a real difference in that way. So we're going to take up our giving. Uh, there's two buckets going to come around uh, each side. One bucket has a tappy machine, and if you'd like to give in that way. It's also got some giving cards in if you'd like to find out how you can give. So uh, let that bucket come past. Tap if you want, or, or, or grab a little card out to find about more how you can give. Another empty bucket then comes around, which is just for cash. Okay, um, so that's why two buckets are going around. So do... Uh, don't feel under any, any obligation to give if it's your first time with us. Um, but as part of our worship, as we continue to sing together, uh, that's how we're going to do it. So uh, let's worship God. Let's lift the roof off this place as we sing uh, the prayer that we've been talking about this morning. I'm just going to pray for our offering. Lord, we thank you so much that um, 
your giving uh, just defies our expectations of what you're able to do, Lord. And we do pray for these gifts of money, Lord. We just pray that it will be used to bring your glory in Lincoln. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, do you grab a seat? Um, just a couple of things to tell you about before we uh, finish our service this morning. Um, the first thing is it's so exciting. Um, the electoral roll. <laughs> is, woohoo! Yes! is uh, coming up. So if you've been a part of this church uh, for six months and you live within uh, this parish, we invite you to um, sign up to the electoral roll. I'm sure Jim would love to tell you all about I it. Will, I will be at the back. He will be at the back, indeed. Uh, but the second thing to tell you about is quite exciting. Uh, next Sunday, we have our church lunch after the service. Uh, so if you, yeah, that it's is exciting. It's not just a church, it's a big church lunch. Whoa, yeah. it's a big church yeah, lunch. Yeah. <laughs> it's huge. Um, so do sign up at the back. There are a couple of laptops. If you haven't signed up, we'd love to um, yeah, do family together and share lunch together. Fantastic. Brilliant. Let's just uh, place our hands out in front of us. We're just going to pray for God's blessing. Father God, thank you that you sustain us. Thank you uh, that right from the beginning you breathe life into us. And we pray, Lord, that you would teach us how to pray. We pray that this week, Lord, we would draw closer to you. We'd know more of your presence in us, more of your breath in us, that we might go out to the, the city, to the villages, to the surrounding areas, and share the good news of Jesus. And so, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Oh man, have a great week. Can't wait to chat to you about the electoral roll.